Starbase progress continues as Starship and its booster prepare to heat things up. Inspiration4 lights the way for future Taurus. The first flock of laser Starlink satellites also made it to orbit. SpaceX wins more contracts, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Despite the threat of hurricanes lately, Starship development in South Texas is up and running. Work continues on parts of the orbital launch tower, like the attachment structure for the rocket catching arms shown here. And SN20 received another one of its Raptor engines a couple days ago, and it's pretty much done receiving the rest of its heat shield tiles until it's placed on Super Heavy Booster 4. We're currently waiting for said booster to static fire its 29 Raptor engines. There are road closures in place throughout next week, possibly for just that. Keep an eye on Lab Padre's channel if you want to watch it live. Okay. Breaking news just happened that gave me enough reason to pull this video down and add the following content to it. The FAA just released their draft programmatic environmental assessment for the Starship program. I left the link down in the description for you. This is not the government granting any permissions or licenses yet, nor does it guarantee the government agency will grant any to SpaceX for their Starship program. But from what I gather, they are not concerned about the noise, but rather the road closures and the impact to local wildlife. The FAA's preferred proposed action, again proposed, it doesn't mean it will happen, is to issue one or more experimental permits or licenses to SpaceX that would allow the company to launch and land Starship Super Heavy, and then take it from there, granting more permits as confidence in the program grows via tests and these orbital launches. Bottom line is it could still be months until the final EA is complete and the FAA determines a path to take. But for now, we get to see some useful charts providing details on tests and launches. Again, the PDF is linked in the description and will make for some interesting bathroom reading. The new Raptor 2 engine facility Elon gave us a heads up about back in July is now under construction in McGregor, Texas, where SpaceX engines are tested. This will help push more engines to Starbase in less time and will be needed since each Starship Super Heavy rocket requires no less than 32 sea level Raptors. Raptor vac and new experimental designs will continue to be built at SpaceX HQ in Hawthorne, California. After buzzing their tower, the crew members of Inspiration4 visited with the Musk man before departing for Pad 39A on Wednesday. It was an honor to wish you Godspeed before you left for orbit. Missions like Inspiration4 help advance spaceflight to enable ultimately anyone to go to orbit and beyond. The crew waving to the crowd as they ingressed their Model X's and made their way to the changeout facility. Upon their arrival at the pad, they executed a group lean back to admire their mighty boom stick that's about to thrust them to space. It was particularly enjoyable to watch Haley's expressions as she embraced the life-changing experiences. At 29, she is the youngest American to ever go to space, despite never being all that interested in the industry. But obviously, she's all about it now. It's pretty wild how the chapters in your life can end and begin so abruptly. One minute you're working at St. Jude, a phone call later, you're making history. If there's a lesson to be learned here, it's that no matter how hard life gets, the sun will rise in the morning. And everything can change in an instant if you just keep breathing. Who knows what your journey has in store for you. Pitching down range. At first stage engine cutoff, the second stage separated and ignited its single Merlin vacuum engine to push the crew the rest of the way to orbit. Meanwhile, their booster made a successful landing on the drone ship Just Read the Instructions, stationed on the Atlantic for a third time. And then the reused Crew-1 capsule, Resilience, with its trunk, jettisoned away from the expendable second stage and drifted off into the darkness. The zero-g indicator for this mission was a stuffed puppy in a spacesuit from St. Jude Children's Hospital, held on a leash because, well, that's just responsible dog ownership. On Thursday, the crew got to enjoy the view from the new cupola window installed on their spacecraft, providing them a clear view of Earth from 575 clicks up during their three-day spacecation. Perhaps Wally Funk should have asked Jif to buy her a seat on the next private Crew Dragon mission. Right on up, and I saw darkness. I thought I was going to see the world, but we were quite high enough. Jeff and Richard both congratulated Elon and SpaceX for a job well done. My sincerest appreciation goes out to all of you who tuned in to watch this mission live with me. Together, we raised $2,339.47 for St. Jude Children's Hospital and their battle against childhood cancer. 
Believe it or not, there were actually two SpaceX launches this week, despite the launch drought we just experienced. On Monday night, SpaceX placed 51 Starlink satellites into a polar orbit from Vandenberg Space Force Station, the first West Coast launch we've seen in a long time, but still as obscure as ever. These satellites are equipped with the new laser link technology that allows them to transmit information amongst themselves before sending signals to a ground station. The booster made a successful landing on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, its first catch attempt since moving out west. Elon says the artificial constellation will come out of beta next month and still plans to use Starlink as a means to communicate with Starship trips to Mars by stationing some in orbit between here and there. SpaceX has some new NASA contracts, the first being a Falcon Heavy mission in 2024 to launch a next-generation NOAA satellite for weather forecasting. And the company was selected as one of five to mature the agency's landing concepts for Artemis under Next Step 2 Appendix N, although SpaceX's winnings were substantially less than the other four at $9.4 million. These companies will make advancements towards sustainable human landing system concepts, reduce risk reduction activities, and provide feedback on NASA's requirements to cultivate industry capabilities for crewed lunar landing missions, which is different from the $2.9 billion human landing system contract SpaceX won under Appendix H. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Monday and Wednesday last week, NASA's newest rover on Mars, Perseverance, drilled and collected its first two rock samples on the Red Planet. This comes after a failed attempt to keep a core sample that was unexpectedly fragile. 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 However, the agency was able to seal the cores of their follow-up attempts in titanium cache tubes, which may be recovered and returned to Earth during a later mission. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, my thanks goes out to my members and patrons supporting the channel. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.